Hello and welcome to Motor Cult episode 62. I'm Eric Berger, joined as always by my co-host Ryan Siniski. Hello, sir. Hello there. I have and, a cold. Oh, yeah. You sound like absolute death. Yeah. Oh, you're not even... Oh, you have a uh, I've, medicinal I've, coffee? I've got my medicinal coffee. I'll probably get... I'll, I'll sound a little bit better halfway through the episode. Sounds good. As we go through fun topics, I'm sure your body will start to eject the uh, the disease. Yeah, all over <laughs> your face. <laughs> and we also have a guest. Hello, Shane. Hello. So, um... Do you have a beer? You do. I do. Excellent. So what are you drinking? I've grabbed a New Holland Dragon's Milk. Okay. I really I, want that. I, know the, I do love a stout. I got those <sighs> in like the middle of the summer, and I just refused to drink a stout in the middle of the summer, so now we're in stout season. I'll probably that's try one like of those my, next. That's my favorite Imperial stout. Uh, I'm on a Barsteiner Oktoberfest right now, and as I mentioned, Ryan looks like he's on some sort of coffeinated beverage. Yeah, coffee, because, yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot of like maybe one beer a day until I'm done with this cold. Ugh, well, <laughs> I feel for you. Yeah, imagine how great Thanksgiving was. I also have like zero appetite. Well, I don't know what a Jewish Thanksgiving is like anyway. Well, I just got to Jan's family, which is like a Catholic oh, okay. Thanksgiving, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. But with, I, I guess assume everyone no overeats hand. equally, right? Yeah, except for me, because I have a cold. Right. And I, like, have no appetite. Did that so. make all of the food taste like rubber? Yeah. I, I don't know what anything tastes like. I can taste, like, cinnamon. I can taste, like, coffee. And that's about it. That explains what you're drinking today. <laughs> Delicious flavors. <laughs> the two remaining senses in your body are still functioning on coffee. Trigger so. the remainders. Uh, absolutely. So, since you have a cold, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the standard bio questions for That'd be great. Shane. I possible. want people to not <laughs> hear my voice as much as possible. <laughs> So standardized testing here. Yeah, huh? no, we're starting off with real softballs, Ooh. which is basically who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Well, I'm Shane Donahue. Okay. Um, I am. I've been a local to Minnesota for my entire life until literally about six months ago when I moved out to California. Okay. Uh, I've been uh, an autocrosser since I was 17, so I've been doing that. But you're for, in Minnesota right now. I am in Minnesota because it's the Thanksgiving break. So mm. you, you've caught me in a brief stint Your to come back to visit my add up, my, sir. my family. <laughs> Okay. Why'd you come back now? <laughs> I, yeah, that's a question I asked myself as soon as I got off the flight uh, hmm. and was met with the somewhat frigid jetway temperatures on Saturday. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm back right now. But i okay. um, been a wrench head, motor head guy since I was like 16, 17. Okay. Uh, what caused you to move out to California other than the obvious reasons? Uh, work was the big one. Oh, okay. um, and then they're like, we'll move you out to, to somewhere warm. And I'm what, like, that what, works. What do you do for your real life job? <laughs> uh, real life job, I do sales engineering for Google products through a Google partner. Oh, Thank okay, you. Cool. Ooh, I yep. love Google. So, I use them too for cloud storage, like all, your sweatshirt. Yep, I get the uh, Google Cloud sweatshirt, but I work on the G Suite stuff, so all the docs and stuff. I also I think them. we would be okay with a sponsorship from Google. Yeah, that would be fabulous. Yeah. You could hook that up. You, <laughs> you know. can go ahead and step right in line behind me and my podcast. <laughs> oh. so, wow. I thought we were going to get some sweet nepotism, but I guess not. Good luck with that one. <laughs> I guess yeah. I'll, Damn take, it. I'll take this motor cult sticker for you and put it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> you could just stick it on the trash, too. So Bike autocrossing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you successful in autocrossing? Are you still successful in autocrossing? If I, so? am, I am lukewarm successful at autocrossing. <laughs> nice. I do reasonably well on local events, and I've placed... Mid pack on average on national championships and such. I see. So well, that unfortunately, seems... I do not have a national trophy to my name, but uh, not yet. Hey, you know, you'll get there eventually. What do you drive when you're autocrossing? Uh, so I drive what I now I'm running a 2011 E92 M3 in F3. Is it a manual? No, it is not. I don't like you. So, okay, I have justification behind that. I bought that car specifically when I moved out to Los Angeles because it is the best option for rear wheel drive. Also, somewhat automated transmission while dealing with traffic, because oh my god, LA traffic. Oh is, yeah, yeah. Just burger, don't drive. Yeah, burger. I don't think I don't think you understand. Like, I've done I've done four or five rush hour traffic. It's but every yeah. day. Yeah, Dude. no, I just wouldn't live there. So yeah, no, right. I, yeah. I I'm the staunchest manual transmission person get, ever. Yeah, and I understand. What, and I, I understand your meaning. I had to get to one car. I, that's the problem uh, I had. Is uh, I had to be one car and be the all utility car. So it had to be fun to drive. Well, then you should have bought a four door. They're more rigid, cheaper, and they're better. But they don't have the compact options. Uh, yeah, including they do. the slick top and the and the the goodies there. Don't worry, I, I prefer. You can coops. absolutely get competition package on a LCI sedan. You you can with the wheels and suspension package, but the roof was not an option at that point. They all had the sunroof, which I had had problems with. I mean, I, I do like slick tops, but come on, carbon I, fiber. I don't like carbon fiber. I don't like your things. choice. Well, 
It's Too his bad. choice. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, at least you answered it. So that kind of that that covers the what do you drive question, which was number two. I yep. assume that is also your daily driver. You are correct. So. Okay. Well, do you I, have a like, I do standard wanna, EDC I wanna, suspension? I want to add. Or? I want to add Ryan, one more thing. I'm second. asking about yeah. EDC. I, I asked it first. I got, I you are what? second in line. Fine. Sir. I will wait. What's your setup on it? I'm not uh, happy about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the car is going to be tell. run for uh, F Street uh, Autocross, okay. where the EDC suspension is actually um, the the thing you want, the comp okay. package EDC suspension. There are a couple of dudes who went like super baller, like MCSs and stuff, and it's yielding very limited results over the stock okay. year. So the BMW brain is pretty good at doing its valving j- uh, jazz when you have the comp package because it's reprogrammed. Right. So. Yeah, I know the ABS and all that's changed. All right, Ryan, yeah. what were you saying? Sorry. Um, You're not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Oh yeah, no, no. You're, you're reasoning for the, uh, the op- automatic transmission. <laughs> yes. Uh, I want to. I want to harken back to that because. Perfect. Yes. Uh, there are many people that say that you know try to reason why they went with the automatic, and they're like, oh, it's better. It's this. It's that. It's just yours. It's just real world, and I do yep. appreciate that because. So many people driving a dual clutch in traffic is way worse than driving a manual. No, no, it's way no, worse no, 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 no. for the transmission. Well, yeah, but it's bad for the clutches, yeah. but like they're so bad yeah. at low speed manners. But I mean, well, that's that's oh, the thing. It's is... not fucking pleasant. I'm not. Uh, so, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all like on the like. Oh, this is perfectly smooth and indifferent from like an automatic. No, no, no. It's I it's think juddery and, and bumpy as yeah. hell. But I think if BMW made a torque converter automatic, it'd be perfect. Well, no, over that they yes. do though. Yeah. They do on the lower cars. Yeah, but no, they, they don't the put on the good one. The next M3 will have a torque converter auto. Yeah, see that clutch. that would be yeah. perfect. That'll be I much better. Want that. It's I want, so like, much better than a dual clutch. Not when you're in it. Yes. Like, really? Oh. No, no, no. It's no, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. Have you driven a G90 M5? Uh, I have driven a, uh, I, so I spent some time in Germany in a M4, I'll take that uh, the no. F80 M4, yeah, yeah. which is, I believe, F82. the same transmission. No, yep. no, because the G90 M5 is an eight-speed auto. Okay, so this was the seven-speed auto in the... It's the dual the, clutch yes. that you drove. Yeah, this yeah. is an actual torque converter auto because okay. they're getting rid of all dual clutches because okay. they're, they're worse now than a good torque converter auto, even at shifting. Maybe I'll have to. I, I'd love to try a new one. But I mean, think about it. If you have a lock converter, yeah. and an auto can instantaneously change the solenoid valve pressure. Yeah. So it's it's the same speed at shifting as dual clutch. Like every torque converter I've driven, though, just feels a little slushy. There's always that momentary hesitation of like off throttle, back on throttle. Um, it shouldn't in be impulse. It's just. It, I mean, I I felt like I I, I know what you mean. Is it unlocking? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Right. It, right, but the M cars are programmed differently, and it that may be, and it's, that's one of the things. Like the first ever automatic M car is the G ninety M five, so like they're, mm-hmm. I think they're programming that solenoid to stay locked every time you're out of first gear, so you don't get the slop, you don't get the right. weird lash. I but th- I don't want an M five. No, I, they're, <laughs> not, they're not insinuating you buy like, an M5. I don't M5. want a boat. Really, the, you should have bought a Fiat five hundred E because good in traffic, really good at autocross. Just call it. Dirty. Um, I don't think the five hundred E is actually legal for autocross. It's not, but it is up here because they have no idea about that rule. <laughs> and it should true. be because it's like it's a Fiat five hundred, and those are banned because so, it roll heavy. Or the other or side of that is I love road trips. So yeah, you would need two cars then. Yeah, exactly. I'm not getting anywhere because it's like eighty five miles in a Fiat. On a brand new one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mine's really torched. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, great though. Because there's nothing like heading out of the office on a Friday night and going into Vegas or or going up to Button Willow or something. All right, the like Model that. Three it so, is. Yeah, right. Good, the new performance pack actually did really well at Button Willow a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we talked they, about that on the podcast last yeah, week. Yeah, it did really yeah. well. It did so well. It got banned. <laughs> got oh, they they're, knew the they're rules. They're updating going the into rules. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, it, it was a, it was a total. We like, talked about how it was yeah. so clickbaity, yeah. basically. Yes. So. Well, it was actually staged up to be that way too, because yeah. they they admitted that they wanted to like for dramatic effect. Do the the takedown on the podium, and yep. so yeah, like, just take just tell us on the podium. Yeah, like, what? And, yeah, right. And they came back and like that was a really bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. So, so yeah, if you're curious <laughs> about that story, go back to Motor Call episode sixty. You can listen at the about that. at the same time, it did get people to talk about you know their time attack series. So yes. yeah, and it, uh, it, that that's what they were trying to do. Sure, but no, I think with your um w- with your with your car choice and not with the the not manual transmission <laughs> that you have. I, I understand your your reasoning perfectly. I do and that, too. That, that that's it makes sense. It was it's that just, yeah. or a GTI was effectively like yeah my no new de- definitely do not do the GTI no, no, the yeah GT, you were right, right. Right. Yeah, I want yeah. the rear wheel drive it's yeah. just way more fun yeah because so. I was going to G- talk about the well, engine not, not being no a I, <laughs> yeah 
No, you made the right decision because that GTI would have <laughs> cost you dearly. It probably oh, yeah. would have been more money and maintenance. Oh, for sure. Than the BMW. Okay, okay that's a big step. That's a big <laughs> step there. I work Rod bearings ever like 60K. No, it's not Rod bearings. But no, it's... I'm talking the M3. Oh, yeah. The M3. I did no, the Rod bearings The already. GTI is just oh, like a new bad. engine every like five minutes. So, basically. Yeah. No, yes, but the new engines probably cost about as much as Rod bearings on an S6. 2500 I, probably, yeah, but yeah. once, and you get I, more time out of a set of Rod bearings. So basically, whenever somebody like comes in pre-purchase inspections a gti at my shop do you just tell them no no i just tell them like be prepared to have between one and two thousand mm-hmm. dollars of crap breaking on top of your standard mileage maintenance yep and that's going to happen every single year because owning this car is not too far off from owning like a 1980s lamborghini and People are like, seriously? I'm like, no, very seriously. And they don't listen to me, and then we make a whole bunch of money. I mean, <laughs> at least so, you tried. <laughs> yeah. So my joy is I bought I bought the M out of Phoenix. Okay. Okay. And I so I I, I literally it was a I went to DEF CON, I drove the the my, my Volt out to DEF CON from California. I drove down to Phoenix, tr- traded it for the M, mm-hmm. and then drove back. And then like like four hours into the six hour drive. I got my first taste of German car ownership, which was the check engine light flipped on. <laughs> but it flipped on when I was doing about 105. Allegedly. So I was like, ah, yeah, allegedly. Um, <laughs> Good word. You don't know what section of freeway I was in. <laughs> when you're on that Mexico. section of freeway, it goes like between Mexico, like coming up. Yeah, no, it loops down. The, the yeah. road back to L.A. loops down through Mexico. Yeah, you, yep. Well, you can because you, you, you miss all the traffic. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you can tell when you're in Mexico because the giant wall yeah. yes. built there on the border. Yep, it's really interesting to drive along it. And, and just see all the refugees trying to climb over. Yeah. It, so. it, it probably sounds really amazing with your engine. It just like, oh, yeah. comes yeah. right yeah. back sound off. Just the oh god, yeah. A <laughs> couple of couple of drives through a couple of mountains I've had to do. I'm like, ooh, bang, 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 bang. Go down to second in the <laughs> seven speed gearbox. Ugh. Yeah, it's a lot of clicking. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Um, so you sound like you're more into the driving facet of car culture versus like car show. 100%. Okay. I am like anti car show. Okay. I am well, that's good like to know. the biggest anti car show. Like it's, I, I feel like there's not a lot of people that span the two. It's, so to me, it's just a big circle jerk. Yeah. Well, a Dutch like, rudder, a circle jerk, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, but, you're, yeah. you are right. There is a lot of that that happens. I, I, I I'm car showy, but mm-hmm. I like to have the happy medium because yeah, I mean, to a lot of car show guys, um, like, Going out on the racetrack, you know, I mean, it's fun and all, but yeah. a lot of the people there are very circle jerky. So, like, there's there's aspects of car <laughs> oh, shows God, I'm yeah. fine with, like stock cars or, like, fancy exotics or something that I don't see a lot of. Those are kind of fun to see. But when we get into, like, the Stance Nation stuff oh, and, God. and the airbaggers and stuff, we are functionally ruining a Best car. Best LED headlight mods? Oh. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. I'm just, I'm just, I'm sighing, and I'm like, you've ruined something that could have been so good yep. or so fun. I think one of my the most cringy conversations I ever had at a car show was I was talking to a person who was like super into stance. Yeah. And they were they were like respect uh, they, all they were trying to defend stance by saying that how it's better than like a super JDM car. And I'm like I being the person who was like into super JDM cars I was like, no, somebody actually had to go out and find all these super rare performance parts. I'll yeah. tell you what every single part does, why it's rare, and mm-hmm. what's cool about it. And the person at the stance car is just like, look at my 15 degrees of negative camber to fit my 24-inch wheels inside the wheel well of my Celica. <laughs> yeah, it's just... I, I, like, uh. I was like talking about it. Basically, so I'm like, Dude, this isn't stance. This isn't like fitment. This is like we forced this wheel into this wheel well, and yeah. it doesn't really fit. Like. Mm-hmm. The top, like, 1% of the wheel fits mm-hmm. within, yeah. That's not fitment. What, what have you accomplished? <laughs> what have you gained by doing this? Like, you, you've you bought a 305 millimeter tire, and, and you're now running on a 185 tread patch. At best. <laughs> and then to top it off, like, 105 PSI. 700 yeah. horsepower or some stupid crap like that. Like, yeah, the contact patch is pretty yeah, hilarious. I've, you're going to deliver that through a bike tire. It, and that's the thing. is like <laughs> when, I, when I think of like... Bicycle. When I think right. of car <laughs> shows and show cars, I imagine more like the, you know, you know JDM stuff and where it's yeah. really like people are like... And that's a lot closer to collector like, car culture. Yes. Like I, I do have a somewhat of appreciation for JDM. I, I love classic Japanese cars. Yeah. Um, but like some of the JDM stuff where you're trying to do like a period correct, like early 2000s. Yeah, that's... Like, 2000 Civic SI build or like an EF hatch where you're trying to be like it's it's a performance build but it's based on like the Japanese market at the time or something like that 
tugs at the heartstrings a little bit because that was the era that I was coming up in. Yeah, and too, that, that's so. that's the thing. That's how I like about it. Is it, it that's him in a nutshell, by the way. Yeah, that yeah. is basically yeah. me. But um, <laughs> no, with, with with that, I think it's I consider it more classic, more like. Uh, preservation kind of yes. like people yeah i see i just i whenever i talk to people with like a pre-war car like a duesenberg or something mm-hmm. uh yeah i hit that bell that's a pre-war bell, the pre-war um, bell. whenever i talk to somebody with like a duesenberg or like a duesenberg or yeah or <laughs> um something, uh, like auto union maybe yeah or? yeah you know horse um <laughs> stuff like I that i can barely reach that thing now people with cars like that <laughs> when i talk to them i get a lot of the same kind of our conversation cues and the same, you know, like basic, yeah, the entire conversation is the same as talking to somebody with like a fully muganed out, like second gen, yes. like prelude. And, and there are limits to this too. Like yeah. for instance, if you're like looking for that JDM, like airbag replacement carbon fiber tray, I'm like, we're, we're done talking here. <laughs> but if it's like, I really want those, like, like, like some of those really good works wheels or something like that right. from that era. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and like in a 16, which just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that. I know that. what you like, mean. Nice. I want a three piece 16 by 10. Well, we have some from a catalog in 1993 sitting in the warehouse. I'll yeah. take those and Perfect. I'm not going to stance my car to run them. Now that you've ruined it. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it, no, but it's, I mean, like something is, like, like JDM Wong yes. Civic is like perfect to me. Yes, we can agree. Stance ruins cars. Yes. Stance uh, ruins cars. But autocross, definitely my favorite form of motorsport. It Thank is you. Very fun. It's, uh, it's it's definitely second to circuit racing. Well, I mean, for me to like actually do. I mean, I don't, I don't need um, Nick to chime in here, but oh, it's, of course. it's definitely second. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were talking about this last night, actually. There's no like way. Every like Are you kidding motorsports me? have. Like this pyramid scheme of like every That's layer shits it. down onto the <laughs> the lower level below it. So it's gonna be like okay, so you autocross guys get crapped on by like HPDE guys, and is then that like drift guys smell like sweat? Oh, yeah. They try though; it's hilarious. They're like, oh, you're just it's like five minutes of drive time. There's no reason to do it. I'm like, yes, but it is a competition event versus. <laughs> oh, I really do like the we aspect too. Oh, it's fun! It's oh, fun. Yeah. I've it's like I, as long as I'm like. You're not gonna win your HPDE. That's oh, like that, oh, there's where you're wrong, buddy. Right. I've seen <laughs> literally hundreds of people try um, you, you don't, to win yeah. their HPDE, but uh, I'm gonna definitely start using that terminology next time I go to an HPDE. I'm yep. gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm, <laughs> just roll up and like I'm here to win. <laughs> what class are you running? So advanced. My uh, a? my yeah. qu- my question for you is: How do you feel about drifting? Because I feel like to okay. a lot of like car like race guys, drifting yes. is the equivalent of stance for show guys. So I can give drift some credit. Yes. Okay. It is legit motorsport in the fact that it is a, a seriously high build effort on the pro level. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff with that. In the end, it is still figure skating. It yeah. is still a judged sport. It is not a quantitative. Uh, scoring points or, or anything like that. So that is, I, I'm, I'm okay with drifting as long as you understand that you you won because you won the favor of that guy or the, the applause of the crowd or something like that. But the builds are fantastic. I, yes. I went to SEMA a couple years ago and I was like, this is some, like, this is not, you know, the drift rack guys. This is like, okay, these are $5,000 shocks in here. This is like a $10,000 motor. That being said, well, yeah, they need Some a thousand the... horsepower. They need a ton of grip. I mean, that's right. what really confused right. me when I started seeing these really high buck drift builds. I'm like, yeah, they're literally like if you just like changed a couple settings on the dampers, like that would be a really good track yeah. car. Yeah. Because like I just figured they were trying to like reduce the grip as much as possible yeah. to just like slide the damn thing. But right. no, like you still need the control. It's like having winter tires. Some of the winter. latest gen stuff I think looks awful. Um, like like uh, <laughs> there's the new like the thing with the FRS is I think is like you space the front wheels out like a mile apart, Ew. and it's I'm just like oh god, it just it looks. Is that just for steering angle or? What? I yeah. think it's for, it steering, is for angle. steering angle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I get the function behind it, and I can I can applaud that oh, from an engineering good. standpoint. But when it comes to like. God, it just looks awful. Like, I just want a JGTC car when I'm looking at an FRS or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, I want the too. GT300 car. Like, that's what I want. That's well, you thing. can't always get what you want. Well, <laughs> as cliche as I can possibly yeah. make that. Um, but you try sometimes. No, but I, 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 I'm kind of in the same boat with drifting <laughs> where a lot of people look, look at drifting kind of the wrong way. They look at it as the same as, mm-hmm. like, you know, actual, like, competition motorsport yes. but it's no it is closer to figure skating i think that's a really good way to mm-hmm. to describe it because figure skating at the end of the day is still an olympic sport yes 
and that's is like it a, a special Olympic sport too or no? I'd watch that. Jana, they can, don't tell can, 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 <laughs> can you look up and see if figure skating is a special Olympic sport? It is. Is it, it is. Okay, yes. Why don't they televise well, I mean, the Special it's Olympics? Like, there's like they ice should dancing, because of the inner guilt then, we all feel. <clears throat> there's ice they're dancing talented. and then there's they're way better than the shit that I am. They are. But there's okay. somewhere deep down inside so, where a little dark part so of me here, one might second. laugh it, at something. Jana just and then answered I'm just instantly going to hell. Jana just Jana just answered all this. So she said there's ice dancing and what else? I think figure skating is its own, but there's also ice dancing and okay. like okay. there's singles partners. Like there, I, this Which, is the only Olympic sport I actually watch. I so. gather. <laughs> how do you watch it though? Uh, I you mean, stream it. The TV. The sp- they put it on I've like never sp- seen. They put on like Fox Sports. Like I mean, 13 it's on in it. Spanish. Really? Okay. The Ocho. Yeah, <laughs> the Ocho. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times they play it at like one o'clock in the morning, so you really have to plan it. I, I really Next love when people it, like, make like, dodgeball hey, references. <laughs> you gotta see this. <laughs> oh, it, it's straight up like the last Olympics. Like all that I did was watch like ice dancing. Oh, I meant Special Olympics. Oh, I've seen Olympics? I've seen Olympics. I'm sure there's yeah. dancing. Yeah, that, that's that's what we were asking. If Special Olympics. Most yeah, of can the, you look that up? Most of the results I've seen between like Special Olympics, like Paralympics and regular Olympics, like they're shockingly close and mm-hmm. how capable people are even. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. No, it's it's there's a lot that's like bogus that they get classified differently. For sure. For sure. Also, yeah. we should also describe tandem drifting is like Oh yeah, ice thanks dancing. for bringing us back on time. Yeah, that here. that's like ice <laughs> dancing what what Jana it's mentioned. Like, but I I do like uh I like grassroots drifting. Yes. But not like drift missiles, but actually people that like put the effort into their I'm, cars. I, you know, I'm okay with that as long as you're not sacrificing something that should get more love. So it, like you if you're drift are. missling an F C R X seven. Or like an A eighty six. An A eighty six. Yeah. There's the drift like tax on all those. Now. E36 M3. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I see that. I'm a just lot. like that's that's the new drift missile. No, E thirty six is R. Yeah. But I mean Well oh. the M threes occasionally drop in there. You get automatic M three that like Comes in at like five yeah. grand. Oh, you can put your way less than that. You can still pick up auto E36 M3s that run a drive for like two and a half. And that's mm-hmm. why it's a drift missile. I guess. Because you, you, ma- you can just put a manual I, in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do it very often. I know. I am, I am all about seeing more people in legitimate motorsports in one yeah. way or another. Like, I've seen too much street racing crap over the years and I don't I don't enjoy it never got into that sort of stuff I actually I really did but it was a different we'll get into that in a second I just Uh enjoyed seeing just the complete shit show that is Uh, oh no I would go down to university on Friday nights in in the the late 2000s and just that was fabulous pop the chair out and watch the guy Mm -hmm. rolling up and down with his mom's like cobalt LS with a wing on it and my favorite Enjoy was that. still those AE101 Corollas with the turbos yes. on them with the anti-lag <laughs> and the baby on board <laughs> right. stickers. So, well, all right. So that's the thing. I actually got like super in, – I'm still really into drag racing, and mm-hmm. that's from street racing. But the thing is, is, like with street racing, what a lot of people would see is they did come down to like Sun Foods at like 11 o'clock and like, yeah. just like see like the Chai Vong Yangs, which is the actual person who is – hilarious <laughs> uh but like you'd see all these people with like um like yeah like they'll, they'll have like an mr2 that's like non-turbo mm-hmm. and they'll have like a blitz body kit oh yeah sun foods that, was a shit show it, it was it was it was yeah. awful but the thing is like a lot of those people you know after about like 11 like 30 12 ish yeah they'll go out and do like a highway run or two and then they the, do have figure skating nice all right cool so there and is special the, olympics figure the special skating. olympics is in 2019 oh, both nice. summer and winter heck yeah this is like the national it's going to be in abu dhabi great that's very cool i'd arrive is, is it in, interesting it's questions in, it's I, in like march i saw for i thought that was illegal there I don't know. i'm just thinking the whole gender issue situation over there and how that's going to play out mm. with yeah, but anyway, street racing. But anyway, yeah, yeah. in so, the two thousands. Well, I'm, I'm talking like two thousands and even later. Um, no, because like what, once you get a lot of the riffraff to trickle out, like mm-hmm. it started to get like a really good, oh, like about one one a.m. to about like four a.m. Like that's like that's when you saw like actual racing. That's when you would the, see like these like three hundred horsepower CRXs it, like take on like yep. Corvettes and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. I admit that, you know, like there's a lot of like serious builds that wind up out there yeah. street racing and stuff. But I think my biggest problem is, is number one, the the lack of safety equipment, the bystander situation. And yeah. then the other factor is, is that there's a ton of guys who just can't drive. No, it's absolutely they will, true. They will go put together this like, you know, because money does not give driving skills. Um, That's absolutely it, true. Yeah. <laughs> Eric is stunned here. Just I'm amazed by okay. all this new information that is. I've, 
Yes. I, well, I'll say it again. I thought money yeah. bought skill and what was, immediate. What was it, that it buys episode? traction control. It buys yeah. really good traction control. I mean, thank God for uh, that. And most of these people. Yeah, exactly. Except they all like ego turn it off immediately. Luckily, most of it's not defeatable on those cars. So. <laughs> thank you. What um? <laughs> yeah. What episode was it where I brought up the guy that crashes Maserati Ghibli into a uh, oh dude that into was... that Hyundai and then crash into the wall and then, like mess up traffic? That was oh. early. That was probably like episode. That was before we did video. Yeah, it was. was I think that was like 15, June maybe. or something. Yeah, yeah. but that, yeah. that was a real thing. This guy always drove like a dick down 394 that in the middle so of rush great. hour, crashed into a Hyundai, <laughs> and got arrested. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> even in like the local scene here, running autocross and stuff for you know almost 50, like 15 years or stuff, so, um, I did a lot of novice school. I did a lot of instructing and things like that. So we would always see there was like one or two every year that were clearly like the street racer type. That would show up with like I've got a 500 horsepower Evo, blah blah blah, and like everything else is stock on it, and then they also just, the turbo lag. Like, I'm sure is really good for autocross. It's perfect for autocross, yeah. which is always the best part because they'll come out and they'll run and they'll think they're top shit because you know okay I'm really hard to beat on a on a from roll from a whatever. thirty roll. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, it's you know ooh, I put the throttle down, I won. Woo. Um, the skills. And then they come out, and then we run the instructor stuff, and then like the instructors in a bone stock Miata is cracking four second faster runs, and they're like. No. <laughs> the hurt, I'm faster the hurt, than the that. The bruised egos? The bruised egos. Oh, they, no. That's my favorite so thing. bad. Yeah. So. I love that. Me too. That's like when Scott borrowed my Fiat to do autocross at Street Heat earlier this year, and he was in the, the V8 classes with like Mustang GTs and Camaros, <laughs> and like this was his first ever autocross event, and yep. he just freaking cleaned house with it. It yep. was amazing, because instant torque, and like there's n- the center of gravity is like through the floor on that car. Because it's got a huge all battery pack on the bottom. The floor. Yeah. It oh, like it was hilarious. Thing, and it was on Reich and Raptors, like not good tires. Right. And it was still just like Clear, no problem. cleaning house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I've seen this on a lot of like there's some definite skill at like good guys oh, and things sure. like that yeah. on the on the higher end of stuff. But mm-hmm. you get dudes trying to maneuver a boat through a very small course, and it's just almost comically frustrating. Actually, one of my favorite autocross moments was I was proving rounds a few years ago. You know that drift Cadillac that goes after? Yeah. yeah. I don't mm-hmm. actually know what they call it, but I call it yeah. the Cadillac. But um there was a guy who, I guess one of his buddies, like, piloted through the autocross course. Okay. And oh, actually, man. like, placed it, like, mid-pack. And there's a bunch of dudes, like, the Street Racer type yeah. Evo, like, STI guys, like, a front mount and, like, yep. a stock turbo. And just has, you like, could tell where the driver skill ends yeah. on, a, <laughs> yeah. on the, the, the lap board the, or whatever the, you call it. The drift autocross. lack, like, actually is, like, I think I get it. I think it was like 34 people that were on the on well, the that thing, on the board, and it than, was like like yeah. 13th or 14th. Like oh, it did decent. Other Drifters than have the really good crap skill. tires that are available for well, the size of that thing. I think thing? this is like one of his buddies, but it, it was it was just power. more it was just more like you, yeah. it, as long as you can handle the car. It's yeah. it's not a matter of what you drive. Like if mm-hmm. a 77 Cadillac Coupe DeVille can outdrive your STI, mm-hmm. it's not a matter of the car. It's a matter of you sucking personally. You need to get better. Yep. Yep. Yeah, also, and, I literally want to see boat autocross in the water yes. now. That's a thing. Really? It's it, not officially like boat is autocross, that that jet but boat stuff? yeah, that is insane. Yes, where they're whipping like 180s and coming back and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, they're they're going through like yes man-made loop de loop drainage ditches, and these things are just they're going at like 80 miles an hour through yep. these hairpin turns on water. Okay. Yep. We we should cover that at some point. That not... and uh, Red Bull Air Race is yes. planes and autocross. Yes. So. Also want the flug tog to come back to St. Paul again. That would be cool. That would be a lot of fun. That's just a good time to drink. Yes, <laughs> I, I concur. I will, I have will they buy... done a flug tog in like yeah. years? Yeah. Well, yeah, they have, but I mean, it was one of the last ones they did with St. Paul. Okay. But they need to bring it back. Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. So, what was your favorite? Like, okay, I assume it was SCCA Autocross you did. I, uh, SCCA and the local club down uh, in Minnesota here is Minnesota Autosports Club. Okay. So that was mainly yeah. who you ran with the whole time. Right. Okay. I was I was board member for years. Is that the m- like that. Moog or okay. whatever? Moog. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. and we've got we're getting into the last few of the questions here. This Shoot. one's really important. This is one of the first ones that has a right or wrong answer. Okay, I think you're going to say it right. But here on Motor Cult, we like to make sure that the people we're talking to prefer to drive a slow car fast as opposed to a fast car slow. And I set you up, you know, mm-hmm. very properly for this question. But sure. do you prefer drive a slow car fast or a fast car slowly? A uh, slow car fast. Perfect. All cars fast. We've had one person never nice. said Two a answers. fast car slow. Very dualistic. And we berated them until they changed their answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, no. I will not name names because he... One, yeah, you can go back and find this episode. Yes. Literally, like, 
right before I moved, uh, like last year, I bought, I was, I, I finally snapped and I said, I haven't owned a Miata yet. Mm. And I'd gotten in a couple of Miata drives. So I, I was on Copart and I, it was a bad mistake, but I bought a Miata on Copart. Good. And the fees so, on Copart just, yes, that was the that. surprise for sure. Uh, but bought that immediately, like it had snow tires on. I'm like, okay, nice. it needs wheels and tires. So I'm starting to harvest things from all my other Miata friends. So I wound up with like 13 or no, some, 15 by nine wheels and some 225s and stuff. So it's and a terrible did you get like an NA or NB or it was a NA. Uh, yes. Okay. 90, Perfect. 95. Yeah. 95. Yes. So one point eight. Yep. One eight. Uh, no variable cam timing and stuff. It was M edition. Ooh. M edition. Oh yeah. yeah. My, no, my, um, it's got, the, that's got the, did it have like the wood steering wheel and shift knob? Yes. Did Perfect. It have, oh, I suppose yeah. it didn't have the original BBSs then. Right? Yeah. No, the BBSs were gone. The hubcaps were in the trunk. But the, the wheels were gone. Wait, uh, that's weird. Also, thank wait. you for calling them hubcaps and yeah, not wheel covers and vice versa. Those are hubcaps. Hey, do I you know still they are. Wait, right. hold up one second. Do you still have those hubcaps? Uh, no, they went. Damn it. Yeah, that was part of my, my big <laughs> garage sale when I moved. So No, my, my roommate picked up a uh, yeah, 95 Miata M edition yep. um, for $200 because the guy had... Like he like put a clutch in it and thought he broke everything and like blew up the whole engine. Yeah. So my roommate buys it for like two hundred bucks. I mean, this would be like a just a turd cylinder. of a car. Well, no, he, oh, he, tear, he get, no, it gets even better than that. He goes into the guy's uh, garage and sees, oh, well, half of the bolts for the uh, bell housing are missing, and then you also didn't replace the flywheel, and the yeah. flywheel's all warped. Yeah. And also you installed. Th- three of the six bolts on the clutch to the flywheel. And he also didn't put in the release bearing, right? Yes, that's true. Oh and he didn't God. do the release bearing. out. He did literally just a clutch like disc, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and even that was poor. Mazda yeah. put all these extra parts in for redundancy. I'm going to le- take them out and speed up. So anyway, bonus bolts. Yep. Don't Ma- need them. Miguel goes to um, the O'Reilly's and like spends like 150 bucks on a uh, clutch kit yeah. with a flywheel. And puts it in in the guy's driveway. Gets the car running perfectly. Drives it home, and he's like, "Yeah, it's great. The car smells like cigarettes inside." Yeah, like they had every possible like tobacco product. Like he had a, he had a smoking pipe. Uh-huh. He had bag tobacco. He had cigarettes. Tins of chew, probably. He had, yep, he had oh. chew. He had cigars. He had literally every tobacco product. Like I'm pretty sure it was like sponsored by Philip Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Mine had a weird mix of like. Nice aftermarket modifications. Yeah. And then, like, complete mistreatment at the hands of owner number two. Yep. Mm, where yeah. it was literally full. I kept finding those little five hour energy bottles. Oh, yeah. The Gross. empties of that yeah. everywhere. Like, I found them behind the dash. I'm like, how did this <laughs> get here? Um, That's probably from the collision. It, but, right. It, it was just ridiculous. So I put a little effort into fixing it up and I just loved bombing around in that thing all summer. Did it, did it have any, like, so you said like nice aftermarket parts, so like suspension stuff or no? The suspension was stock, but what oh, it did okay. have it like it was very interior to Like, oh, okay. like he had taken the effort to custom leather wrap the the tombstone, like the center dash column. And oh, stuff nice, like yeah. oh, nice. And it was falling apart better. because of that, but it oh, was still yeah. like the effort was there. I took it out, and there's like 50 million staples and glue around the backside, but he tried. He tried, yeah, yeah. E yeah. for effort. It probably looked good for 20 or 30 minutes. So after Miguel's that. tombstone was actually perfectly fine. Nice. Which is shocking. Um, but then on top of that, uh, once we started cleaning up the car, mm-hmm. by we, I mean him. I mean, I, I looked at him doing well, this. It's, it's his car, so yeah. of course he cleaned it. Yeah. But once once he cleaned it out and everything and started like, cleaning up the outside and everything and got like, the plasti dip off the wheels, they were the actual BBS wheels nice. that he had. He doesn't have the center caps, mm-hmm. which is the only thing that kind of sucks. But um, the outside, he took off like the half the car was plasti dipped. It was really weird. So he took that off. And the car's actually got pretty solid black paint on it. And nice. solid wheels. Under the hood, it's all good. Like there's not anything that's really like weird or missing. Mm-hmm. But like, so, like the front bumper is a little messed up. And like the rear like deck lid looks like it's painted with a broom. <laughs> but other than that, the car's solid. But yeah, yeah no, it's almost things. Yeah, he had like like a perfectly good tombs. It was such like, a weird find. I'm really jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, so, so. I was uh, going to say, is that is that all of the Miata tangents now? Slow, slow car fast, I think we covered yes. it yep. there. Yeah. Perfect. You, yeah, you, lots you, of Miata. You own a Miata. I own you a own Miata. Miata. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're really good at tangents. Luckily, my cough interrupted my tangent before I went on. <laughs> Excellent. Derailed right. him. Number six. And this is the second to last question. Penultimate. Okay. So, 
I guess this was a year and a half ago now, San Diego, I was on vacation, found on Craigslist an engineless 1984 Ferrari Mondial Coupe hardtop. Okay. With the Speedline wheels, blue, but again, it was a QV car originally, mm -hmm. no engine, no transmission, no nothing. Okay. I wanted to buy it and put an engine and transmission swap into it that wasn't from a Ferrari. Okay. And I missed it by the time I got back home and it had already sold. So sure. that was unfortunate. So that was the incipitous, I guess, for this mm -hmm. challenge, which is called the Mondial Challenge. So you've got this car. You paid six and a half grand for it. You have to make it run and drive by putting in a transverse mounted engine and transmission. You okay. cannot cut sheet metal. It cannot be a Ferrari QV engine and transaxle. Okay. There's no price limit, and there's really no other requirements. Ooh. Manual. It, sorry, it has to be manual, and your, your transaxle can be bolted on with a commercially available adapter, adapter kit. kit. Oh, this is a really specific question. Not yeah. really. It's, but, but, like, it's good, too, because it really makes us understand who you are. Yeah. There's, there's no wrong answer, technically, for this one, unless yeah. it voids one of those rules, we'll tell you. Okay. So, I don't know about commercially available adapter plates, is, so, is the first one I'll, I'll throw out there. If you don't but I will, know specifically... I, I'll, I'll throw out there, like, a, a pairing that I think would functionally work, Okay. and then you can shoot me down on this. We but, will, probably. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's going to sound super stupid, but it would it would annoy so many people. Maybe we should and tell it would, you ours. It would keep the 12... It would keep 12 cylinders in it? Or it was expand. an 8 originally. Yeah, so expand. So Because I want a 12-cylinder Ferrari. You can't fit it. You can't fit a Jag 12 in there? Nope. Ah, oh, that'd be really cool if you could, though. No, right? You're limited <laughs> well, by... Even with the stumpy little Porsche gearbox? No. Because <sighs> those are... First, those are longitudinal. This is transverse. Yeah. Oh, transverse. Okay. So you're limited to a My V8 bad. or a four-cylinder in length. Maybe a Volvo five-cylinder. Okay. okay. That'll fit. It'll it fit. It probably mm. would fit. But, I mean, so, yeah, transverse okay. is the real kicker. Because, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you're really you're limited to, like, four cylinders in okay. depth. Okay. Uh... Screw everyone, have the biggest lap possible, and put a EcoBoost one liter Ford engine in it. Perfect. That That's is the a best because it'll definitely fit, and I will just <laughs> boost it to sin and back, and just be like, yeah, it's still got like it's got like 400 horsepower. That'd be super reliable. Cylinders. You you only have to make like 240 horsepower because I so can, it's like an entirely attainable amount of power. That was the whole Ford <laughs> argument too. When they built that engine, was like, look, it fits on a carry-on suitcase. Yeah, I'm like, perfect. That. It oh, goes right through security. the block. Yeah, they had it in a suitcase yep. <laughs> just to see if they could get it through TSA. Yep. So. Um, um, yeah, we'll tell you just, our Yeah, now. my, my yeah. answer was a 12A rotary with a peripheral port and a Holly Dominator carburetor okay. on a um, AE101 Corolla 5-speed manual transmission, which there is a commercially available adapter plate. Are you plate. just, like, a sadist? Do you yes. just want self-harm? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Ryan. Well, okay. <laughs> All right, so this is, my, like, this I, is my reasoning. I had to think of something that made 240 horsepower and sounded about as cool as a Ferrari, and only had to be more reliable than the 1980s Ferrari. Okay, that is so a low bar. It's a really low bar. So a, I think an Italian con con that, continuous injection system. Yeah, like yeah. that. This is like the only time I could ever make like one of my favorite <laughs> engines, like actually a viable swap. <laughs> At least been like 13B, like 12A. Yeah, 12A, really? man. Yeah, that's like you just want a weed whacker. <laughs> I want the noise. Oh my great. god! <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Oh, and whoa. I went the sensible route. I wanted a 3.3 liter Toyota 3MZ FE Sienna Camry motor. Okay. Bolted to a 1MZ 3 liter Camry supercharger, which they made. Yep. Bolted to a Solara five speed transaxle. Yeah. So basically, the 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 hot MR2 recipe. Yeah, yep. but not the 2GR, because right. okay. I'm old school for some reason, and you don't have a transaxle that's a manual for the 2GR, which gotcha. sucks. So yeah. that was my main reason. Otherwise, 2GR all the way, for no. sure. I'm, then, I'm thinking... But 400 horsepower, turnkey reliable, super light. There you go. Yeah. Ben, I, ben Sue from Japanese Nostalgia Car came up with a weird with one I didn't think about, because I totally we've forgot... we got some weird answers. I, I totally forgot that this even existed. The 30, oh, the Acura CS30... Mm-hmm. Uh, it came with a manual J series transmission and a distributor um, based J series V6. What car is this? The Acura CL. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 And so it was a 3.2. A 3.2, right? yeah. But there's a 3.0 on there. On, I th no, I think I it was the Accord. Right. It, was, it was the Accord 3.0. By the way, he said the Accord 3.0 mm -hmm. with that manual transmission is it'll be like crazy reliable. Yeah. And I'm like, 
damn it. And yeah. <laughs> and well, like, I mean, presumably you could bolt a later J series onto that transaxle, right? You could. Or you could use he, an NSX. He specifically C said a, the older J series. Okay, oh, that's, that's fine. That's I would just be interested to that. see where the Ferrari product begins to reject its donor or its transplant and just what starts to fail around that. To, oh, to, all the time. To compensate for the new exceedingly reliable <laughs> engines that have landed inside of it. But I mean, just imagine having like going out to your 1984 Mondial on a 20 below day and you turn the key and it just immediately <laughs> starts. <laughs> it's like what the hell? Better yet, doing it in front of friends. Like, what oh, kind yeah. of black magic is this? This is my this is my winter yeah. beater. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, like it was a San Diego car, so like oh yeah, you, you could shape. get a few winters out of it before it completely falls apart. And it was six and a half grand. Like, uh, who cares? Yeah. Like that'd be the perfect. That'd be the coolest Daily winter driving car that of thing through a winter. Time. I'm sure the heater's terrible and all that, but like yeah, whatever. No, you just use the heater core out of like a volt. No. Well, a, it's the mm. ducting and vents. I don't think it's the heater core. I think that's probably okay. But like everything else, you know, the Magneto Morelli, I, it's probably not great. Just that's plumb true. a radiator into the cabin. You'll be yeah, fine. <laughs> no, it's the same. It's a switch for the 14 inch spall fan on yeah, it. Yeah, it's, call it good. it's 200 degrees or nothing in there. <laughs> Get like an EF Civic like, heater core, which I'm convinced is just a full size radiator because I've never felt well, a hotter. Full size like, Civic radiator. That was part of half of their cooling plan in that car, basically. basically with their cute little not... half radiator. <laughs> yeah. Like, we put the other half in the car. We didn't think yeah. you noticed. To be honest, I'm you continually know, amazed by how small those radiators are in this God, God bless didn't the. didn't generate anything. I know. God People bless the Honda. Um, like God bless the Honda half radiator because that car allows almost every Japanese. Uh, every other Japanese car to run a ridiculously large turbo, yeah, and then yeah. have a half radiator like five, like and they're like, so core cheap, options. right? Make a zillion of them. Thank, so, I mean, thankfully, somebody built it so that we can all go get aftermarket ones. Exactly, we need it's it. yeah. that's why I'm thankful for the DSM. Like, it is the perfect parts car. <laughs> <laughs> It's you like a BMW E36, man. It's just a great Best parts, parts car. car ever you, you don't want E30. a running one, just a lot of parts. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. all the parts. I just want my E30 to be even better. Well, so. with uh, for a while, like I, I can't. When I was a kid growing up, I was like, I was had an Accord, and so for like, all the Accord guys, the DSM was the greatest parts car because they break down all the time. And in like 2005, 2006, junkyards were full of mm-hmm. DSMs, so you could go like feasibly get yourself like a GST turbo kit. Mm-hmm. I have a junkyard for like 200 bucks for every single part. Yep. And then on uh, the 90s Accords, their uh, exhaust manifolds almost perfectly bolted up. There was one bolt that you'd have to break off, like for the like furthest to the right ex- like bolt on the exhaust manifold. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, every other bolt. I thought it was one of the inboard ones, too. It, I, I couldn't remember. It's This yeah. is like 10 it, years it ago. It was close enough for a high school student with some hand tools, basically. Yeah, yeah. and like it, all it, the it, it all the seal. runners, the runners would like seal <laughs> yeah. and be perfect, and you could make like, I think like the record was like 450 horsepower. <laughs> on a disco potato? Yeah, Damn. like they would, like if somebody used like there was like somebody in like Ohio got like an MA Performance like back when MA Performance yeah. was doing their big turbos used like oh, one of okay. those I turbos. Thought you were talking about like a, a G, uh, what I forget what the stock turbo. A GST, is the but yeah. yeah, no, the, oh, the actual turbocharger. Oh, I think it's called thirteen, yeah, thirteen B or something. Like yeah. Twenty or so. I have no idea. Tiny. Yeah. yeah. No, but it was it was based off that with like a larger okay. uh, compressor that housing. Makes some sense. But um. <sighs> No, they basically used a modified DSM turbo on a F series and made like 450 horsepower, yeah. in, like on oh, E85. So, so like what Bissy made with an NAF. Yeah, series. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys familiar with uh, uh, Mighty Car Mods? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, are you watching the the, the new sex spec Evo that they no, started? What's that? <laughs> I haven't watched it since Super Gramps was done. Just, it, I kind of lost. They they so the sex spec was like the early 2000s, like shiny wheels and bright paint and like oh, expensive God. leather, yeah. like that show car sort of stuff. Very um, VIP esque. Exactly, and and so they bought another. Um, spec. So they did like too sexy, which was the the shootout of like the Lancer, the Mitsubishi Lancer. <laughs> that was they kept calling it an Evo as like a joke. It's an Evo. It's an Evo, bro. It's, it's totally just an a Evo because it was it was a sketchy turbo Lancer <laughs> uh, coupe. And then so he countered and found like one of the leading show cars from like the early 2000s that Is was that that orange sure. one that yes. they just bought that it's, mirage or whatever yeah, that's a lancer in in okay uh, so now once again it's an evo but it's an evo <laughs> with a like gen 3 evo motor front clip swap okay. to it oh, and stuff so oh god um so that's they're now evo, right? <clears throat> so they're now in the process of trying to get it to run so coming back to your turbo situation with the dsms and stuff yeah. it's like that's literally what's happening on that car right I, now i'm gonna have to actually watch that yeah it's, it's, i do it's, love mighty car mods they're a lot of fun marty and mooger i just love their accents too yeah I'm, yep 
So let's do the last uh, question. I'll let you cover this one since you're sounding better. Uh, yeah, I told you a coffee would help. <laughs> I, after, I didn't uh, say no, did I? <laughs> I agreed with you. No. All right. So um, what affordable car would you buy in California, mm-hmm. e.g. car for like a week, Yes. and then drive to Minnesota to sell for a profit or to keep? Or both. Sell for a profit. Okay, well, it's got to be something that's got to be on the rusty side up here. It's yeah. a little bit yeah. difficult to get um, clean shells and stuff like that, honestly. And it can't be something that's, like, just consistently expensive all the time. Right. So, right. And, I mean, this is something you could realistically, feasibly spend right. money on. So, for, like, you know. mm-hmm. for example, like, an EG Civic would not work because an, a clean EG Civic mm-hmm. in California sells for, like, you know, Four grand, and in Minnesota also sells for like four grand. Okay. Yep. But out in California, like a third gen Camry station wagon sells for like fifteen hundred bucks out there. Yeah. The one up here sells for like four grand. Yep. So that was my choice. Yes. So, and I have to work with this thing for the better part of a week driving. You do have back. to drive it yeah. around yep. doing regular errands and okay road trip stuff. So the thing that I've been seeing a ton of after moving to California, which is staggeringly surprising, and I know I'd probably probably find a market for up here. Is old Mercedes diesel wagon. Yes, those are great. Yeah. Yes. Holy crap! They would are those sell for everywhere. Tons of money. They're brown. They're dirty they're... as all hell out there, but they're rust free. Right. There's no ru- like I have seen like a like a they're freaking all like there. a Mitsubishi Mighty Max pickup truck, and it's like half crushed, and there's just exposed metal everywhere, and there's like a light patina of rust on it. And <laughs> I'm just in like, a coastal area of California too. Right in the Los Angeles metro. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just sitting there like that was a that is a pile of dust in Minnesota. Like oh, yeah. that doesn't That's exist already been anywhere. through four Chinese washing machines. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's fully recycled for various lab based iron ferrite testing or something. So <laughs> that's um, how I do it too. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So like just put it on a lathe and get rid of it. Nothing survives uh, uh, up here and everything survives down there. So it's just you could practically pick anything. But I think that the turbo diesel Mercedes yep. would probably do pretty well That's up here. That's a great answer. There's a lot of the 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 kind of hippie types up here a little bit that are would be all about corn converting that and and getting off grid and blah 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 and stuff like that. That would sell I that, did that thing in, in high a school. It was great. I had a 1987 Turbo Diesel 190. Mm-hmm. And it was great. actually my my friend Trig, uh, one oh, of our God, yeah. common guests. He um, this is like one of my favorite stories about him to tell. We were all hanging out at my friend uh, Chase's apartment mm-hmm. but in the next day there's a car show and Trey goes and uses the bathroom and then immediately after going to the bathroom excuses himself and then uh we don't hear anything from him and then yeah we know, we're trying to call him up and like get a hold of him to like have him go to the car show with us the next morning this is a car queen's show at uh, uh dctc okay um and he like nobody can get a hold of him. Right? I wonder if he's like sick. Like he like left like right after he right after he went to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and he shows up halfway through the show with this prosthetic limb tan, like Mercedes. Hearing aid beige. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like yeah. <laughs> nineteen seventy eight, I think Mercedes three hundred D turbo diesel. I thought it yep. was a two forty. Is it is no? It's a two forty. I think okay. it's a two forty. It, whatever. It's a turbo diesel Mercedes. Um, same thing. Yeah. Shows up and we're like, where the hell did you go? He goes. I was on Craigslist in uh, in Colorado, and I saw this for sale. I called the guy. The guy wanted, like, nothing for it. And I asked him, does it run? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, are there any problems with it? He goes, no. He go- I say, why-, why are you getting rid of it? He goes, I don't have room for it. And he goes, all right, I'll see you in the morning. And so he <laughs> left the apartment, parked his uh, Impala that he yep. inherited, parked that at the airport, Bought a plane ticket at the airport. Wow. Flew to Colorado, drove back in this same day, did not sleep, and then goes to the car show with this oh, like man. flawless Mercedes. It was and he came to buy parts from me after that car show for the Mercedes, yeah. <laughs> which he had owned for less than a day. Yeah. Well, it was actually, a, it's a very nice Mercedes. It's in fabulous condition, yeah, especially not, for he, a first year W123. Yeah. Nice. He uh, he lowered it now. He's got some uh, Borbit. Borbit type A's. Some, all right. So Borbit type A's are even more hilarious. Because talking about uh, like dumbasses out street racing, mm-hmm. there's this kid that we know that had like the world's worst 
EG Civic. Like everything was bad about it, and he bought it because it has B series swapped. But look under the hood is like the worst possible B series that you could yep. ever put in a car feasibly. <laughs> but he uh, was selling these Borbit Type A's because they didn't fit his car, and he had never looked up what the value was, and he sold them to Trig for I think like 130 bucks or something. Nice, just like oh. nothing. <laughs> Luckily, the five by one twelve, so you get a lot of reciprocity with the stupid stance crowd. And yeah, WB. but yeah. oh my. God, like that. They look that kid, that kid got ho- got hosed and tricks. Like, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I ran Chrome AMG monoblocks on my car, so I look like a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, you sure. did. You definitely did. Oh yeah, I got pulled over by the cops. I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? Just a white dude sitting behind twenty percent tint in this white Mercedes that's just totally slammed. Did the <laughs> as you rolled the window down, did the police officer apologize and just walk back? <laughs> I mean, in more words, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't cited um, for anything ever in that vehicle, but I was pulled over a lot. I'm sorry for interrupting you, sir. I'm sure you have a business deal to get to. <laughs> no, it's always like my backpack, and I'm like this 18 year old kid in this car. I'm just like, and I've, got, I've got like the Recaro 16 valve seats in it. I've got yep. 400e brakes on it. The thing was bomb. One of my favorite cars of all time. If I ever find a turbo diesel, yes, please in decent do it again. Yeah. It again. And I was, I even had the parts to manual swap, but like rolling around in the trunk and I just never got around to it. I would also throw that onto cars to get from California. Cause you yeah. Oh yeah. Cali. yeah. Um, I mean, and those are, those might be worth something out there. Cause it was a one year only car. Mm. And it was I like, don't think so. Okay. Well, don't well, tell me that. Cause get, I got to buy my neighbor's house. La 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 la. Yeah, la. that's true. Um, no, uh, in our car, R107s. Yeah. Okay. California is lousy with those. Yeah. Those aren't worth anything up here. Uh, they're worth decent. They're not worth anything up here. I, I just want one. That's what I know, which is why you said it. I get it. All right. That is actually, I think that's the last of our standardized questions. So, Ryan, why don't we go into your uh, major topic here? Yeah. we Usually, we do multiple news stories. Okay. Um, Today, we're doing one. We're doing Bring it on. one really <laughs> massive one. Since you're the guest, uh, okay. feel free to interject with this. Um but uh, Carl Scone, who have previously been our benevolent overlord, well, yeah. ex benevolent overlord. Well, we have two. Now we just have one. It's Bob yeah. Lutz. Yeah, Bob Lutz. Um, <laughs> who was my Carl, benevolent overlord? Carl Scone, who I've been calling Carl Scozen, yeah. but it's Scone, apparently. Okay. Um, Set the record straight. He whatever. was literally arrested in um, once he yeah. landed in. Uh, in Japan, and actually, uh, I'll go ahead and bring up the article for all of our listeners. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is going to get interesting because he is he was like a national hero in Japan. <laughs> All right, well, so this is the thing. Uh, seriously. Was, no, he, yeah. no, this is the thing. Is It was a national hero to this man as well. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it's, it was a weird like kind of duality to him because he, he was kind of like – the only way I can really equate it is he was kind of like um, Emperor Palpatine mm-hmm. in Did Star have Wars. Unlimited power. Basically. <laughs> um, yeah. So the, the way I'm, I'm saying that is like, yeah, he w- they were citing him as being like – the national hero. He saved Nissan, like one of the one of the most beloved car brands in Japan. But at the same time, was also like a really kind of a shitty person. Did he try to save it from the almost death of the Renault Aventime, wasting all Nissan's money? Yeah, <laughs> he was responsible for that. Um, <laughs> was he? Al- car wasn't ever. he also responsible for the cross cab? Yeah, yeah, oh. Renault cross cab. That was okay. Uh, big- uh, he lost points in my book. I didn't know about that one. Yeah, no, he he, uh, he actually designed that as a gift for his wife. Oh, oh. no. She, I'm really glad he got arrested. Did there. he get his, divorced promptly after No, that, his, the thing is his wife like loved it and like she was like oh. I really want this this truck. I want a Murano, but I want a convertible. And he goes, "Let's just make it." And I'm like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and and so was like, "One? Yeah, we could put the R&D guys on making you one." He's like, "No, no, 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 production." Like <sighs> um yeah, but so that started a market segment. Those are awful. Yeah, they're they're really awful vehicles. Yeah. But uh, sorry, this is what happened. Was um, he apparently was under investigation at Nissan mm-hmm. um, it, because of misuse of company finances and stuff. And I like embezzlement. Sounds uh, cool. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> misreporting income. He misreported ninety million dollars. Well, that's that's an honest of, mistake <laughs> of income. But the thing is, is like no, there aren't any. Japanese CEOs are even paid that much money yes. that he misreported because he basically underreported half of his income. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if I'm not is... trying to incriminate the man. Yeah, <laughs> no. I wonder if this is like a feedback thing because there, there is like a law about Japanese CEO income, actually. There is like a scale that says they can only make so much over like lowest oh. paid work or something. That's clever. Yeah. So I like it, that. Yeah. It, it kind of keeps the market 
trapped a little bit. It so, trumps it, yeah. um, so that's why you have a lot of Japanese companies actually reporting as American companies now. So they've, you know, mm. they've, they've moved on shore so that the, their leadership can make more money. So I wonder if, if Nissan was so bound to staying Japanese that he's like, well, I mean, I'm severely underpaid compared to my CEO compatriots. I'm just going to dig into the, into the coffers a little bit deeper and disappear a little funds left and right. So, <laughs> So well, I guess I guess what he had right. done. Um, Works for me. Yeah. <laughs> one of the, one of the things he had done um, that really kind of irked everybody at Nissan. What a great word. Yeah, mm-hmm. irked. Um, they had this. Perturbed. They had this fund that they were using for um, a, like a Dutch startup to okay. for financing or marketing or something investing. Embezzling is for investing, and. Through the Dutch <laughs> investment firm, investibling, yeah. For, through the in the Dutch investment firm, he had purchased four houses in different countries <laughs> as investments for him to live in. Uh, I too like to launder money. Yeah, so <laughs> that's that's super greasy. Uh, but the thing, what gets even like more weird about this is, usually they the Japanese police aren't super public about doing stuff yes, like this. Yeah. So the fact that they, they basically like threw him under the bus. Okay. So the Japanese police aren't super public about this, but Japan in itself is actually super racist. So the yes, chance to true. throw a French CEO out of their leading national company, Damn. they were just like, I guarantee you those guys were chomping at the How bit. How many like, Dutch rudders well, were going on I'm, inside yeah. that building? I, I am <laughs> getting to that because that is actually part of this. Um... Because oh, let's see here, uh, Reno keeps him on board. Um, <laughs> sorry, I have, we do research. This is present. There, there, is, there are six. There, are, there are six. For the record, uh, J- Ryan is holding up yeah. a complete hand of five and his thumb on the other hand mm-hmm. to make six. There six. are actually six uh, Japanese nostalgia car stories about this. Oh my god! Um, Japanese nostalgia car was the first uh, outlet. They're, they're mm-hmm. the, I write for them. They're the first outlet to break this news in America. Uh, they broke it like literally hours. The continents, yeah, like anywhere in the like or the, the United he- States, the Western Hemisphere. Interesting, interesting. nice. Mm. Yeah, so North America, nice. Yeah, North America, South America, Mesoamerica, Cuba, Mesopotamia. No, 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 no that's, their that's terrorist really farming is. is delicious though. Um, so mm, Mesopotamia. Let's see here. I just gotta get to the quote that the Nissan CEO said. Uh, all right, so the I one. love the Renault Aventime. The, the mm, new, yes, I love the Renault Aventime. <laughs> this uh, gentleman, uh, his last name is Saikawa. He's the current uh, Nissan CEO. Uh, basically, had the Japanese equivalent of a Alex Jones freakout while talking Who's about that? Alex Jones, the yeah. the guy from Infowars, takes his shirt off and screams. Oh, what is Infowars? Uh, it, we're, it's, we're turning the frogs, Nissan. Oh, so he's yeah. like a repub talk show host or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's he's like the, is it Rush Limbaugh? He's, he's worse than that. He's worse. He's, he's full on conspiracy theorist. Uh, yeah, he's a conspiracy theorist. Uh, uh, the the chemicals from the chemtrails turn the frogs gay. Yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he's known for having these ridiculous freakouts. What's that, Nick? It's glycosophate. That's what he's talking about. Glycosophate. It actually does turn the frogs gay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, so um, is it anyway? This Saikawa guy had the equivalent of like <laughs> ripping his shirt off and storming out of the Fox News headquarters. Oh god! We uh, learned um, something new today. All right, the, the, I need to I need to have his quote that here. That's the Japanese equivalent of Alex Jones freak out. <clears throat> all right, let me turn up your mic slightly so it's Tra- dramatic as translated here. I feel strong anger and disappointment. I am very sorry. That Is there video like of this? I want like the Japanese <laughs> version of this. The, I, don't, I don't think you understand. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, no. It's, it's very, Japanese it's very culture. tempered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In Japanese culture, to come out and say that, I am mad. Like, oh, I, well, yeah. Say, saying that, you have to be a like, just completely ass mad to come out and say that. Uh, um, yeah. So anyway, I wonder if one of these is his. I think one of the other fantastic bits of what happened here um, is. When they arrested him, they they waited for his plane to arrive. Did they put him in a diesel Volkswagen? <laughs> Close, a Toyota Hiace. Oh. <laughs> and what's even worse <laughs> is they sent the Nissan Serena that they had in their fleet to Carl's Gones residence 
<laughs> to search it. So like, they could have easily arrested I'm glad him. to know that executives yeah. in these companies in other countries still have a tremendous sense There's, of humor. There is some Toyota exec just peeling off Yen to the police officers. Like, you, t- you pick him up in that one. <laughs> they go down to, like, Japan Hertz. And, like, what do you have? We need this to like look like a cop prisoner. car in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like a black sharpie they put that little like loop to loop on the hood it's all green duct tape and safety logos you pick up the car and it's got the the what's that uh initial d livery yeah. on it like i said yeah. police not initial d <laughs> they pick him up in that thing yeah. like just the driver's floor <laughs> they put a, a bozozoko lip spoiler on it and oh god that'd be really funny. still the little hertz barcodes in all the window <laughs> corners so good so um i think we would be good at routing executives out of car companies. That'd be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I think this is like a gumball rally sort of thing that needs to happen now. Oh, no. So, all right. The, oh, no. The, so this is, the, the, the story <laughs> continues, though, here. Because um, when they arrested him, and this, they, they came down like super hard on him. And yep. the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department has kind of been known for going a little lax on large executives lately mm-hmm. for like the last like 10 How years or so. How large was he? Yeah. Like they didn't really, when uh, the uh, Mitsubishi Zaibatsu, that is like uh, the, the bank behind Mitsubishi. Yeah. Um, when they were found laundering money for the Yakuza, they got a slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. which is a whole not- new story. Thank you. In of itself. Thank you for um, talking. That we, nobody really talked about. I feel like we really should probably talk about that at some point. Um but, you know, here we are. Um, also, Mitsubishi <laughs> is like a, d- a day late and a dollar short to literally everything. Oh, yeah. Like, they just no joined the, what is on a good day, the largest auto manufacturer in the world. Are they trying to turn the frog skate with their chemtrails? I think so. Okay. But, like, Mitsubishi just joined that, and they, like, reaped no rewards and all of the negatives of that. It's just <laughs> the poor company. Like, they can't catch a break. They should have picked him up in an Eclipse Cross. Oh, that would have been we know where Ghost is going to go next. He would have seppuku on the way out to the car. Mitsubishi's oh. going to be all about offering him in jail. Like, he's like... <laughs> Just sign the agreement paper, and our lawyers will be all over this, like, through the bars. What lawyers? They're probably well, public defenders of how little money Mitsubishi has. I, I think, yeah, it's, I think, A, it's a public defender. And did B, we say, did we think, say lawyers? We meant lawyer. Yeah, lawyer. His name as, is Tom. His name is, yeah. his name is Donnie. <laughs> he's got a corduroy he's a, suit from the 70s. That's all he can do. He's an Big ambulance change. chaser from Nevada. Uh, <laughs> he oh, does personal injury. Found him on Billboard. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but all right, so th- this is, th- th- I think Mitsubishi is actually going to try and cozy up to Nissan more because mm. they are they're completely on board with outing Gon. Oh, I hope they don't. I don't want Nissan to get dragged down with Mitsubishi. Well, it's actually Mitsubishi to be dragged up with Nissan. So uh, <laughs> I think ooh, both are going to happen, right? Yeah, parallel so, sinking. Unless we get like an Eclipse Cross with the Red Sport Q70 engine in it or something. It's it's like the it's like the rescue ship hitting. The sinking ship. Yeah. In, in its effort. <laughs> Something about inertia as a property of matter. I don't know. <laughs> Bill anyway, Nye the science guy failed me, apparently. So, on the 22nd uh, of November. Two so days two ago. Days ago? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nissan did out Goat. Okay. Like, he's no longer on board with Nissan. Hmm. Um, the French government. How long had he been CEO there? Uh, since 1999. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Right when the Renault Aventine was coming through the ranks. Yeah, he's the one that okayed that. <laughs> good. Good man. Um, I don't care what he did. Let him free. <laughs> so. But he also did the cross cab. Um, yeah. Emmanuel, Kill him. Emmanuel Mercury. Murder him to death in See, front of a stake. I think. He, he, I did, think, a, he did approve the GTR. So yeah. This it's an is auto true. only. I don't care about that thing. Also, it's Actually, really hard on consumables. I'm s- really hard I think on what, consumables. Like what Jana brought yeah. up to what Burger brought up is a perfect description of Carlos Ghosn. Is... He is the man that brought us the Renault Aventime. The best thing ever. But at the same time, also gave us the Cross Cabriolet. The worst thing ever. <laughs> yeah. It, he, he saved Nissan by ripping out its heart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what the car was. I just remember an interview that he did with a British press where they had announced that they were going to bring over more, like, Renault brands. Okay. Yeah. Um, under, like, the Nissan label. Right. Yeah. And... He's like, so, you know, you're bringing over this car. It's kind of a dated car. What are you going to change to update it to, to British? And he's like, we're going to put bumpers on it. <laughs> like, gonna, literally, that was the response. Yeah, he's just like, to pass the... 
we're gonna the tests. We're gonna change the bumpers, and he like, and then just they're like, really? Like, I would I yeah. would love to see Definitely. an interview between. What else would we have done? Yeah, I would love not to see to it. change the bumpers. <laughs> I would love to see an interview between <laughs> Carl Scone and Kimi Raikkonen. Oh my! <laughs> How was the race? It was good. That's good. What did you change, Bumpus? <laughs> it was good talk. Yes, very, what, very best. What was any parts of it hard? Some, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some parts, <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Yes, very good. very good. I'm happy. I'm going now. Are you excited uh, about the future prospects of uh, the Nissan Renault lines? Yes, very. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but no. Speaking of that, getting back on topic. Um, Whoa. He is still don't do, on. Do that usually. He is still on at Renault. Nice. So we're gonna get the Citroen Cactus, is what I'm hearing. Well, all right, so this is kind of... <laughs> Jenna looks so happy. <laughs> well, the Citroen Cactus is from C4 Peugeot. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. How, uh, by the way, Peugeot did actually specifically say that they're coming to America. Yes. Yay. Like, so, they said that, like, 100%. Yep. Like, that this is a thing that's going to happen, so maybe Jenna's we will. Next car. Yeah, exactly. A heavily depreciated yeah. two-year-old Peugeot. <laughs> you know it. Um, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? But any, uh, it's nothing. best not to think about that, really. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll with the punches. It might sit in a garage, but at least I'll own a Peugeot. Mm. So from what I understand, um, oh my Ma- word. Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, uh, France owns 15% of Renault. Yeah. So this whole thing's like getting really gross and muddy with the Renault side. Because Emmanuel Macron, he's obviously, you know, at face Swollen value. Swollen with tol- baguettes and wine. Yeah, yeah, he's like totally pissed about everything that's happening right now because the French government, like Nissan stock is tanked mm-hmm. like a lot. I'm uh, shocked. Yeah, it's same thing with Paul. Renault. Um, he's keeping, he's keeping. Um, Housekeeping? Going on, or he's he he wants going to stay on as CEO at Renault, as to kind of save face for Renault. Um, so there's there's an interesting aspect to this here too is the, the political side. Of yeah, it, which like, is did Go never become like a Japanese citizen, or is he no. like fr- okay? So he's the Japanese French government citizen. is now holding a French citizen. Yeah, like, but the French people just surrender, so they're not going to fight back. <laughs> Yeah, you can true. have him. Just don't. Whatever. It's yeah, like, like just call him in your jail. We'll tell you he's Japanese. But he's got enough money that he might. Uh, they might like. Uh, he's ex- I think he's gonna be in jail for like ten days or something. Like wow. Yeah, like he. Hopefully they, nobody makes they, him their bitch. They actually like put him in jail. Jail. Like, like they, federal pound me in the ass prison. Yeah, like a jail. Yeah. Like they. But did, do they have the office space jails in Japan? There's so gonna be a whole. Yeah. Fleet of Renaults just waiting outside for every yeah. prisoner at that point. He's like, cars for everyone if you just don't touch me. Can they be first gen Twingos? So they all say Merci Twingo. <laughs> I, I do. I do want a first gen Twingo. Um, I don't think anyone doesn't. They're so happy. They are happy. the happiest car. <laughs> um, and then, so yeah, there there is that whole political thing that makes everything muddy. But this is a no, another thing that makes things muddy is. Is it mud? Yeah, it's mud. There's a lot of mud. <laughs> it was raining. Whoa. But um. No. Sh- um, there's, a, I, I guess that there are, are some of the Somebody people that are insiders at Nissan saying that there's an, another reason that Gon was outed so heavily instead of like, just like kind of like cross crabby the slap sales. on the wrist, the slap on the wrist and kicked like silently kicked out of the company. Was that the Renault Evans um, almost bankrupting the company in 2002? No, Gon was actually tr- wanted to merge Renault and Nissan and. Uh, not that sounds a, like a fabulous idea. Not as a partnership, but as a, a yeah, a, as an actual single entity. What they should do is also merge with Volvo and then bring back the PRV engine that was used in the DeLorean. So, and yeah, to us, their new corporate V6. I, on the outside, to Americans, this you go, is a good idea, guys. You go, this isn't a bad idea. However, no, it's a horrible the, idea. Is this your application for new CEO ship of, of Nissan? Yeah, here? yeah, yeah. I want to bring back the PRV. These things. are my plans, guys. That is my one. That's my business plan. It's and just bring back the PRV. I will immediately acquire <laughs> Volvo. Upon and then my maybe hire. like ex- experiment with building a car factory in Ireland for no reason. Yep. Maybe in case we want to build a stainless steel body to a sports car. That's really slow. So the the reason that this was th- totally. this was super <laughs> like unpopular in Japan is that Nissan is, I get one of Japan's like sweetheart companies. Yeah. And to have that be They like Nissan more than they like having sex with one another. 
yeah by a substantial margin right. exactly there's a lot more cars than kids in in japan right now. tons more yeah. actually yeah because <laughs> like they don't have time to have sex yeah you know how many cars are getting sold every day it's a lot more than babies popping out in japan right now but so um he wanted to merge him as a single company and in japan that was not going over well hmm. and in 1999 when reno and nissan first began their partnership what an what, excellent, fabulous partnership that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the stipulations was that they will always be separate companies. They're not going to merge together. Then Gone comes in and says, I want to yeah, merge Yeah, but just take the Comcast model. Like, yeah, we're going to not be a monopoly. And then look at us now. Yeah, exactly. We're that, not th technically a monopoly. There's a there's CenturyLink. They're different <laughs> companies. Trust Again, us, it's kind of like <laughs> Emperor Palpatine yes. getting rid of the Senate right before yeah. he gets killed. So um, I, I choose to see no correlation or causation in these. these yeah. Steps. So um, yeah, it, it really sounds like Nissan just kind of noped him out of office, <laughs> and uh, in in the in the most public manner. Um, Remember that house thing we let you do a little while ago? Yeah, we're it's gonna just go not ahead. working now. You're you're going to jail now. Yeah, we. Here's some handcuffs. I just put these on. We looked up some words in an English dictionary. One we like this one called embezzlement. So <laughs> it's got two Z's in it. Right. Us. So now there is another thing to add to this. Oh yes. Oh, it gets even more complicated. Oh my goodness. And this is because of terrible timing. The Japanese royal family, right in the middle of this whole going situation, yeah. uh, announced that they were getting a new parade car. Okay. What explain to me what is a parade car, first off. So a parade car is the car that the Emperor is seen in during parades. Uh, previously, it was a, for the longest time, it was a Nissan Prince uh, Royal. Mm. It was it was so old that uh, it was actually developed before Nissan bought Prince. Wow, the first Google result is Japanese established. Hey, look at that. Um, but recent, more recently, they had a convertible Rolls Royce. They used it literally twice. Mm -hmm. Everybody oh, in Japan that. does not like Sorry. that. Uh, yeah, the standard government cars are centuries. Um, but There's yeah, the vert that, rolls. Yeah, that's the convertible yeah. rolls. Um, but yeah, now they're... Um, what the... Yeah, that's okay. the Prince of Monaco. <laughs> that looks like it would get warm inside of it during a summer's day. Yeah. In Monaco. <laughs> I just, like, I don't have a beef with the Prince of Monaco. I just want to take pot shots at it and see how bulletproof it is. Yeah, that's, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bullet very, resistant. Very, Bullet very, resi yeah. I'm very yeah. curious myself. Right. That's a um, big dome. But <laughs> that's what she said. said. Yeah. Woo! All right. So, well, this is the thing is this is something that has come up really like twice in history. Yeah. Nissan won it once and then they bought, uh, they had to replace it with the Rolls Royce because that's the only other car that could be on par with that. Okay. And so th this is something that Nissan would have really, really, really wanted, you know, for the prestige of the company. Sure. Okay. And a lot of the now, president's now, Cadillac, basically. Now, yeah. with this whole Gone situation, yeah. they are the one... The Power Stroke pickup with a Cadillac body stapled onto Nailed it? Nailed it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are 100% out of the running for this now. Lexuses? No, no. no uh, you have brought Nissan. shame upon oh, our okay. nation. N oh, Nissan's right. Oh, like, yeah. So that's like an ultimate slight for like, oh, yeah. domestic pride. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, so... Ooh, <laughs> that's I got like Carl, bad goosebumps. I think Carl, if Carl Zagon ever entered the country of Japan again, he might actually be killed. Actually, we should just have him I on motor might, real quick, and then he can redeem himself. I, I think that there's a chance he. Fine. I would not be surprised if somebody tried to assassinate him while he's I in jail. I feel like nobody there is motivated enough to assassinate anyone. I don't know, man. I mean, their entire are, national culture is about not like being in the way of the other people. So, But the thing is, once you're yeah, in jail... Neither seen nor like, heard, like Arrested yeah. Development. Well, that's the thing. What, once you're in jail, once you're on the other side of the law, like you're basically nobody. You can do whatever you want because your life's ruined. So I can sharpen toothbrush handles and shift people? Yeah. Nice. And it, it makes no difference if you do or don't. So, um, <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> All <yeah>. right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they're the, the Japanese royal family's looking for a new car. Um... So yeah, what uh, Ben wrote is he had, he suggests the LS six hundred H uh, Landale, which was that picture we saw. It's mm -hmm. still up. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know about that one. 
but it's not bad. I like that thing actually. I think a Toyota Century stretch limo with the roof, like a retractable the Centuries roof. Centuries are just too old at this point. No, they still they just made a new I one. I know, still too old. I, think I do like that as a V12 though. That's pretty cool. Yeah. A convertible Century would be dope. Fine. So. Let's just give them a Pope Mobile G Class and call it good. That's not Japanese. Just ah, put ooh, put ooh, a Lexus ooh, badge ooh, on it. It'll be fine. No, in Germany have some long Wait a second. Ties. A Pope Mobile Land Cruiser. Yeah. That okay, fine, sure. Yeah. That would be very cool. Or I got it. Suzuki Jimny. I was literally about to say Suzuki <laughs> Jimny. <laughs> got Ju- it. Not even anything special. Just a Jimny. A, a lime green Jimny with the Pope Mobile top on the back. There you go. Yes. Pope yes. Bubble. I wouldn't even. We've say solved. That. We've solved Jap- Japan's problems. Yes. Just get a Jimny. <laughs> Jimny Pope um, Mobile. There's yeah, your new so convertible. perfect. That 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 whole single like story really was just massive. Um, that's dominated all most of automotive news this week, and it has dominated our entire podcast. Yeah, well, it's a kind of a big deal. It is, which is why we covered it. Yeah, that's almost exclusively if you don't count Shane. Oh uh, yeah, because <laughs> if you um, no one counts Shane. I'm just I'm trying we to kind of th- do. I mean, you'll be in the blurb. Ooh, it's kind blurb. of a, I guess this this is the biggest. Japanese automotive news, like since the Takata incident, I think it's the Japanese equivalent of Dieselgate for how Still big of a so many letters for Takata airbags yeah. for cars I don't own anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but I think this is also like having the... a Takata airbag uh... in my current car. Yeah, I get I... those letters like. Once but week. I've had 76 cars and like a lot of <laughs> airbags, <laughs> and so, a lot of them died in my possession. So there's a lot of cars that are still. Oh, on my better bonfires for you. So, yeah. um, are you saying you welcome the death that comes from the Takata airbag over the, the honestly the continued messaging from the Takata the airbag potential? Company? Like, I'm totally life's about calculated risk. I am willing to accept that calculated mm-hmm. risk. Shut up. So, I have yeah, never had a bag yeah. deployment and I haven't been driving that long, right? But like, I drive cars with good brake pads and tires, so like, not a, yes, Nick. You say like, what I saw a Rav4 on the way here. Doing what on five with the with the with the airbag blown, really? like sitting undamaged on the side of five. <laughs> the driver's side airbag. Yeah, just like the, curtain, the side curtain. Yeah. Well, the curtain bags luckily aren't a problem, but the uh, the steering wheel and some passenger. Yeah, I, I couldn't bags. see if the other bags had blown, but I, the side one, the side one had gone. What out. did it? What happened? But that's Nothing. not the, that's not the issue with the Takata <laughs> yeah. bags, though. I mean, it's not like a, a false detonation. It's like the the the. The, the metal, the metal casing around the charge wasn't strong enough, so they uh, intermittently sometimes would send pieces of it toward you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, maybe that person is dead, and that Rav4 should probably go check on him. Yeah. But <laughs> Br- bring a stick. Yeah. Poke it was <laughs> on the other side of the highway. A scraping so. stick. Free Rav4. That's a good <clears throat> if it's a V6, totally go get it. But so um, <laughs> I I think when we do the <clears throat> Motor Cult Awards yes. and uh, after uh, you know in December. Yep. Um, this will be a shoe in for biggest legal clusterfuck. I, I don't know. Volkswagen really has a lot of. I, this, this is bigger. Is, yeah. this, this is, is probably is bigger. Bigger than Volkswagen. I'm still gonna make the argument for like the TSI chain recall and the Dieselgate thing. But that that's I think well, that's, Dieselgate was 2016 technically. Yeah, Dieselgate's not in the run. All right. Well, then the I, time. Yeah. yeah, this is bigger than the timing chain recall. Yeah, this is definitely TSI. bigger than that. I really think that. Um, actually, I would put this. This is a very, very close number two to Dieselgate. You sounded like BC just now. This is very close <laughs> indeed to the Dieselgate scandal. Listen, this cold's doing weird stuff with my voice. <laughs> Clearly, it's turning you South African. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, but oh, man. yeah, n- this is a really, really, really big deal because <laughs> Gone was he was everything Can we for Nissan. Just call Nissan. him Skozen because, like, I'm Skozen? so yeah. Whatever you used to say, because like now that you're saying the name right, like it just it isn't sitting well with me. I'll just call him Carlos. How about that? Perfect. All right. So, um, Car- yeah, Carlos is uh, he was kind of the everything of Nissan. Mm-hmm. So having him gone is just... he's the Lee Iacocca of '90s Chrysler. Yeah, actually, you know what? Imagine if Lee Iacocca got found guilty of all this shit in 1989. Yeah. That that's how big of a deal this yeah. is for Nissan. No, that's actually a pretty good way to put it into like perspective of people that don't really. I think I think that Japanese. should be our sure. bombshell for this it's episode. Certainly, it certainly can be. 
I just have one more thing before we do that. Yes. Do you want to plug your podcast? I would love yeah. to plug what my podcast. Yeah, what is your podcast? You Go ahead and do that. I, I can drop a link, too, if you want to give me one in the uh, the episode description. So I uh, I run with Neil Thompson, another local autocrosser. Uh, no way. The Miller War guy. <laughs> yeah. That software is crap. Sorry, Neil. <laughs> I'm really good friends with Jake. So uh, we do the Cone Coach podcast, which is effectively, it's a very targeted education podcast. So we do a little bit of offshoot sort of stuff, but our entire goal and discussion points are usually around um, improving you as a driver, helping you with car setup, things like that. So try to stick to valuable information and what, and what outlets a, are you on? A little bit of fun. Um, just about everything. Uh, I've, I think I've seen that before. I actually. think the only thing I'm not on right now is Spotify, but not due to undue effort. It's because Spotify is like a jerk about things. Yeah. So we've noticed that. Yeah. We've yeah, been trying yeah, to get yeah. out of there as well. So iTunes, Google Play Music, uh, Twitcher, whatever. Just yeah. search for Cone Stitcher? Coach Podcast. Stitcher. Yeah, that's the other one. Twitcher is. Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. Okay. Uh, cool. We don't we don't live stream at this point. Okay. So. Well, you did just now. We did. I In fact, have live. You're currently streaming. live. I am currently live. Is yeah. there anybody watching? Yeah, there are four people. Is there watching. somebody oh, on the internet? Four? Yep. Four viewers. Wow. Check it. What's up, internet? Hello, industrious little fellows. Hello. Hey. Hey, at the start of this, we should hi. get Shane to mention that on the social media. Hi. <laughs> What's that? What? Before we start this, we should get Shane to mention that on the social media so people can watch this live. But we just did it. We oh, did it. Crap. We're too late. <laughs> That's how Next live time. works. Dang. It's over now. Well, you could still, we can supply you with links. I'll put a link to your podcast in the description. Appreciate it. Although it's not technically today, I should also mention Jana's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, Happy birthday happy tomorrow, birthday. Jana. If you are, if you are you listening tomorrow. to this on the podcast and Feel free not to buy live. her a French car and send it to her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it I was mean, actually I've, Sunday. I've it's the 25th. French cars on my laptop. You, you do. She you has, are just pegging the shit out of that I microphone. Too, she is, they're rather expensive see. French cars. However, if you would like to get Jana a fantastic uh, birthday present that I cannot afford her, uh, she would love a Renault Twingo. Yes, Twingo. We'll and if you Twingo. are too lazy to do that, just go ahead and uh, head over to the Motor Cult Patreon page and buy us some beers. And uh, buy, yeah, that'll buy somehow us. trickle It'll go down to, like, economics. Money. Yeah. Or <laughs> another one. I think Jana another would, one. Jam would probably be okay with a Renault Alliance. That's that's probably within like the the monthly Patreon budget that we already yeah. have set out. So yes. if, you, if you have ten bucks, just go on your local Craigslist page, buy an Alliance, and just drop ship it to yeah. Jana. Yeah, uh, y- you can email us at uh, cultmediaoutlook.com and uh, give us. Also, uh, we will give motor you a, at overboard.com, yes. which is the show's actual email address. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we we can actually uh, give you an address to send. The Renault Alliance. Or you could just drop cat pictures on the motor cult. That would also be really great. Yes. I would like that. These are all things that Jana would appreciate. Tons of good suggestions for Jana's birthday. Birthday cat bombing. Hell Hell yes. All about that. I think we should that that's uh good. Uh check out Cone Coach uh podcast. Conecoach.com, Facebook.com slash Cone Coach. Uh we don't have Twitter because whatever. Twitter's for the dumbs. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a Twitter, and I use it usually just to My yell Twitter it. is so old, it's my first and last name with no other formatting. Oh, my God. Yeah. I have one from when Twitter was created. High five, me too. Mine is at Kyle Katarn, though. It's just for me to yell at people I that work at I still don't EA. understand where that alias came from, right, but so I don't want to know either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know where Kyle Katarn came from. It's probably incriminating. Star Wars. <laughs> it's a Star Wars thing. Okay, it, it exists now I know, exclusively even though I tried not for to. me. Yeah. I, I wanted a more direct route to yell at people that work for EA when they make a bad decision regarding a Star Wars game, and that's why I made that Twitter. So is just so I can complain. More. How's screaming into the void working out for you? Actually, there were a couple of suggestions I made. I think uh, thousands of other people made that actually got fixed at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. Exactly. Gushing grannies. That's On that we're... bombshell, yeah, there we go. let the internet name all of your important stuff. Bodie Sorry, McBoat Carl goes in. Yeah. Oh, I'm so bummed about that. We will catch you guys on Wednesday for episode 63. Thanks Bye. for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.